So today what we're doing is we're gonna European mount a couple of moose that we shot this year. We, uh, the way I do it is I boil water, get the water boiling and put the, uh, the skulls in the water until the meat wants to start pulling away from the bone. Um, then what I do is I take my pressure washer and I have an osculating tip. Everything is muddy back here. We just got done washing all our tarps and six bys and everything. This is an osculating tip. It'll blow any meat, any remaining meat left on the, uh, the skulls off. It's a pretty impressive tip. They're not that expensive. I think they're like 80 bucks. I know I have a huge uh, pressure washer here. Any pressure washer will work. I can't remember how many PSI you got to have to work that oscillating tip, but and pretty much any pressure washer should. Normally, I just do it on a, on a turkey cooker bottom, but this year I'm trying to, I'm just going to speed the process up with a weed burner, get the water up to boiling. If you uh, if you're looking for a high super high quality European mat you won't want to do it this way I don't care about the nasal passages on the moose we shoot if it was a uh, trophy moose I'd probably pay someone that has beetles I used to have beetles and really the only thing I ever used beetles on was my bear bears that we shot and and uh, doll sheep if uh, if you want the nasal passage bone left in or cartilage, whatever you want to call that stuff, little bones that are in there, then this probably isn't the way you'd want to do it. But this is quick, easy, and free. So one of the moose, <clears throat> we were able to get the hide off after we shot it when we got back to camp. The other one, we got back to camp late at night and when we got up the next morning it was completely frozen solid uh, it was like 10 degrees that night so now that we're home it's a little warmer here it's thawed out we're going to finish taking the hide and all the meat off this one's pretty much ready to go so <clears throat> we'll throw it in the the pot bring it to a boil Here's uh, the first bowl. Right in there. Then what I do is use a trash bag, put it over the top. Some of that heat in, the trash bag's probably gonna melt, but it helps in some of the heat in. So, this is the one we weren't able to get the, the hide off. Still semi froze. We'll be able to get some of it off. What I do is come up the center of the skull, and then I just V towards. Each antler. You want to be careful not to be digging your knife into the, the skull. So I leave a little bit more bone or uh, a little bit more meat. I'll just blow that off with the pressure washer later. Normally I try to get it as close as I can to the antlers, but with that osculating tip, it'll blow any of that hair right out of there that's left.
got it going for about 15, 20 minutes. Let's pick it up and see what it looks like. So it's been boiling for about an hour. Oh yeah. You can see it's starting to come off. Yeah, go and flip it over and get the top of the skull. Go down. Oh you're hitting the you're hitting that antler down there. Try to put it on that antler, wrap it up. Okay, now we'll let that side go for about an hour. I need to add some, actually we need to add some water, you guys. We need to run that hose over here again. We'll let the top of the skull boil for about an hour. We should have done that before we flipped the, or did the bottom. So it looks like it's starting to come off the bone there. We pull all what we can off by hand, throw it in the trash, and we boil the rest off with the pressure washer. Getting ready to put the second one on. I'm gonna leave the lower jaw on this guy. It was still froze. It'll be super hard to get out. And just take it off after we boil it. What do you want to cover? Mm -hmm. So today the boys are spraying the meat off their skulls with the pressure washer. So we got all the moose in the garage. What we're gonna do, let them kind of dry out for a night here. And then we're gonna start putting the peroxide on and start whitening them. But what we do for the smell in the, in the, uh, in the skull or in the brain cavity is we put either carpet, smelly stuff, or what I usually use is borax borax will pull the smell out but the carpet cleaner seems to mask the odor a lot better in my opinion but they both work so we just fill it up and leave it sitting there for two or three days and uh that helps with the smell a lot here you can fill just fill them out that to all of them and tonight we'll probably start spraying the spraying the uh, peroxide on so two of these are the ones we shot and the other two are a couple kids that uh, are on our our kids wrestling team they wanted to learn how to do euro mounts this year so we got to come out and do it Ok, 
Okay, so we got peroxide painted on all of them. Let it do its thing. These two turned out a little bit darker after boiling them. Maybe it's the length of time they're dead. These two were killed earlier in the year than our two. But the peroxide should whiten it. Let's see, see how dark that is right now. Let's see how it looks tomorrow. So you can see how white these skulls got in one night. That peroxide on it. These darker ones. You can use a little more peroxide. What we do is we take a Dremel tool, you can see I clean these teeth up. Owen cleaned them up this morning. Take all that, that layer of plaque or whatever it is off. And then we'll uh, put some peroxide on those teeth, whiten them up. This is what they look like, all dark. Any of the little meat that's left that didn't come off with the pressure washer, we just scrape off. Put peroxide on there again, it should dissolve all that. Another thing we do just use a wire brush, put all the antlers, clean them up just a little bit, and that's all we do for the antlers. We don't stain them. Uh, sometimes, if I pick up like a a dead head or something we'll, we'll stand that but we leave all these antlers the natural color the way they look when when we shot them so. So we're putting our second round of peroxide on. Pretty white already. Stay away, face. This one's already, you already did this one? Yeah. After we get them all whitened with the peroxide, we use a uh, rub in mop and blow. Right there, <laughs> it smells good and it keeps the dust from getting in the, uh, in the bone. So let's put several coats on. We got one of them. So these plaques, we uh, cut these this tree down last Thanksgiving up at our cabin, and I ran it through the sawmill. Uh, it's cottonwood or poplar, aspen. It's one of the three, but it's pretty wood. What I do on the back of the plaques. To hang then we uh, take a 5 8 washer like a big fender washer I drilled three holes there so that we could run the screws into the wood and I took a hole saw and uh, hole sawed this and then the kids chiseled it out so that it's recessed and it's not up against your wall scratching your wall and then to attach the moose, 
I run one screw right in the center of the skull right there. That's, you get the most meat, or the screw grabs onto the most bone there. And for the two lower screws, you can see I just run them, drill a hole through the, the plaque, <clears throat> then I run the screws right in the bottom part of the skull, right ne up next to the teeth. Okay, here's uh, we got them all done. These three right here, that's the first moose they've ever shot. That one over there is Jake's. That's what they look like. Pretty nice moose for first moose. Is it heavy? Yes, I mean, hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it.